Jeff just came running over shouting, I got a pistol. It's quite heavy, so the magazine might be in there as well. May I just hold it for a second? This is what they were seeing back in the day. Good morning. We are back on the Western Front, digging on World War II front lines. I'm with the Dutch Relic Diggers, World War II Unknown and World War II Artifacts. You can find them on Instagram. Hopefully we're gonna find a lot of World War II Artifacts. It's gonna be a beautiful day, stay tuned. I think we've been at it for maybe half an hour and as you can see the roots are very very thick here it has been very hard work and I think actually right there I just picked up the first interesting signal of the day well let me just show you first of all right there I just dug up this 20 millimeter Hispano casing so this was fired by an airplane and uh, probably this dropped from the sky but interestingly enough there is a signal right next to it right there and I think these are some leather parts and I do believe that we have a gas mask here. So that will be a very interesting find. Let's take that out and see. It could still be a shoe, but I'm thinking it's gonna be a gas mask. I think the eye should be somewhere over here. Yeah, 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 you see the glass there. Look at that. It could be a British one. I don't think this is a German gas mask, but <laughs> interestingly enough, I mean, like, what is that Hispano casing doing there? That dropped from the sky. So that is a big coincidence in my opinion. Hey, there's a part of the filter there as well, I believe. Yeah, right there. I'm wondering how complete this one is, actually. This is the other eye. Those glass bits. That's the filter part right there. Right, I think there should be some movement there. Yeah, there we go. That's yeah, recognizable still. Well, it's quite beat up, I must say. But it's definitely a British gas mask. You can see the filter part right there. And there we go, British gas mask. You can see the ice clearly, part of the carbon filter. And here's the backside, other part of the filter. Those eyes are still intact though. No broken glass here. It does seem like there is more here. Well, as you can see, we've dug quite a bit deeper. And these two British 303 rounds just came out. And actually, there is much more. I do feel some more here. I have one in my hands here. All right, well, you might recognize this spot from one of my last videos. Uh, actually, Jeffrey is digging out this foxhole right here. And on the edge over there, he found a very special German dog tag. So we came back because we definitely didn't cover all of these grounds. So, but right now we're excavating this foxhole to see if maybe some signals pop up. We haven't even checked the foxhole yet with a metal detector and Jeff all of a sudden pulls something out and he yells, gas mask eye. 1940. Wow, that writing is really clear. And there we go, 1940, Ihnen when on the inside of the gas mask eye, stop condensation. I do hear some cracks there, right? Yeah. There are some signals there, so. That's promising. This is a really interesting version of a pinpointer, actually, what he's doing right now. And the next find is a war coin. And interestingly enough, this is a Dutch war coin. And we're not in the Netherlands, guys. We are in Germany, on the Western Front, like I mentioned. And usually, these are in a rotten condition, these war coins. They were not made of the best material. This side is really pretty still. Jeff actually invited me over to do a live dig because he just recognized the rim of another coin. Get that out. Oh, it's, it's a, big a big one. one. I'm guessing this is gonna be Dutch 25 cents because that was the larger one. You're right. Oh, I am right. <laughs> Look at that. 1942, it says. Yeah, 1942, 25 cents from the Netherlands. Again, usually these are in a rotten condition. You really. You're really lucky with the condition of that one, man. Yeah, it's quite good. Beautiful coin. That's where our bags are at. That's where Jeff found that dog tag, or he was just digging in that foxhole. 
and right next to it I got a very high pitched signal very small target and uh, I was just snooping around this area with my pinpointer and all of a sudden I spot this over here <laughs> you see that shape well, okay, either it's gonna be a holy pendant or it's gonna be uh, a, an award, a medal, a badge, however you wanna name it. Let's discover together exactly what it is. I'm hoping it's gonna be a war medal. Well, the shape is clear. So this is the back side. Yeah. Year over here. There is a year indeed. And I think I see a line there. Could this be a Dutch award? Because we also found some Dutch coins here. Mm -hmm. So that would be really interesting. Were there maybe some Dutch soldiers here fighting for the German army or were these just souvenirs? Let's, let's get a brush, let's find out. There's gonna be at least a year on there. All right, let's see. 1937. 1937. L-S-K-Veluzoom. That's Veluzoom, that's, that's, that's a Dutch, yeah, that's a Dutch location. All right, as usual, it's Jeff again with the Google search. He just found out that this is probably a Dutch military award from 1937 from a Dutch volunteer department of the, of the army. So maybe this particular soldier uh, joined up with the German forces. It could also be that these Dutch soldiers, they were fighting alongside the British soldiers that uh, went through this area. That would be my guess. I think this is a silver medal as well. That is a beauty. So we're all gathered up again. Right there is where I found that metal just a minute ago. I'm actually digging in some sort of a ditch. Maybe you can see a little bit. And um, in this area, we found more stuff being uh, dumped in the ditch. So that's that's a really promising part here. Um, and I just pulled this out. <laughs> I believe this is the inner part of a German helmet. You can see all of the leather is still intact. So now I'm really wondering if the helmet is still going to be there. It's an aluminum liner, as you can see. And the leather bits are quite nice still, it seems. German. German, yeah, yeah, from a German helmet. Wow, that's that's interesting. I've never found just the liner part. Look at that. There could actually be a name still in there, guys. I've seen that quite often, actually. Oh, look what uh, Rob has. And Rob has a shovel. Well, maybe you can give me a hand digging the other signals out. Well, this is for sure still a hot spot. I just found the helmet liner part. Two meters further. Jeff pulls out a watch. Pocket watch. Wow, the, the, the clock part is still in there. It has the Roman Roman figures. The leather part is on there as well. They had this on their belt probably. Yeah, look at that detail on top there. It's a really neat one, man. There's probably going to be some riding on there. Congrats, man. That's, uh, that's an awesome find. So basically, I've already metal detected this forest edge over here. And there were quite some shell casings over there. And actually right behind that forest edge, I had quite a deep signal over here. The first thing I noticed was this handle. And uh, I already recognized this handle a little bit. I think this is from a German Eskischier. That's a mess tin basically. So I dug a little bit further and you can see, uh, I think that's like an aluminum rim here or stainless steel. I think it's aluminum actually. So I think this is gonna be the German mess tin. So let's see if we can get that out. It's quite stuck still. Is it complete or just the top? I think it's the Eskishir that's the top part, but maybe the other part is still there. Yes, there we go. The Eskishir, that's the top part of the German cooking pot. Standard equipment, all the soldiers carry this on their back. Oh, wow. I think there's still even some paint on this. We should give this a brush. I do think I see some original paint on there still. That's not too bad of a condition. But they would use this as a, as, a, as a pan. They would like hold it like that. And they would have soup or anything else, ration related, food related in it. Even looks a bit, little bit burnt here. Burnt, yeah. I definitely used it. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Right, so Rob is taking out a foxhole over here. And actually, he first found some leather parts. Those are over here. So we were already wondering like from what kind of belt this is. Could be maybe the German Y-strap or a rifle sling. <laughs> and I think the latter is actually what we're looking at because Rob just pulled out this Mauser K98K butt stock. Well, this is the butt plate, this metal part, but there's still some wooden remains in there. This is all made from wood. We just moved some uh, 100 meters, moving to a new spot actually. 
and I just stumbled upon a really loud iron signal and as you can see it's a mortar tail and I believe that this is a British three inch mortar tail it's quite a big mortar actually Jeff and I have been working on a very deep signal for maybe 15 minutes already and uh, all the way down there you can see quite a massive object it's that thing over there we are not really sure what it is yet but it has a really weird shape looks a little bit like a grenade but we want to make sure it could be some sort of canister so we're gonna dig this out very carefully and uh, yeah bear with us we're gonna figure out what it is all right so it is loose there is movement there and I'm really not sure what this is look at that the whole that whole side it's opened so maybe it's some sort of container um, I don't know let's let's find out Nebelwerfer. Nebelwerfer? Ja. Nebelwerfer rocket then. And it has definitely, <laughs> it's definitely done its job. I mean, the charge is gone. It has definitely exploded as you can see. Wow, I've never found the head actually. I think I found a part of the missile of the rocket that was placed here, but this is the warhead, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like opened up like a flower, you know? Yeah. The Nebelwerfer, also nicknamed Screaming Mimi, was a multiple rocket launcher used in the Second World War. These rockets were usually equipped with smoke or high explosive warheads. The rockets were designed to explode on impact while the warheads would still be above ground. This optimized damage to ground targets. Many types of Nebelwerfers were developed and some could even be mounted on military vehicles. The crew members had to distance themselves from the Nebelwerfer to avoid the exhaust flames and they would fire the rockets with an electrical switch. Mounted Nebelwerfer Warfers gave the Germans remarkable offensive firepower while being on the move. We're detecting this uh, very neat forest edge of here, as you can see. Jeff just came running over, shouting, "I got a pistol!" <laughs> Man, I have never found that myself. Wait, let me let me get my close-up camera. It's quite a small pistol, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's quite heavy, so the magazine might be in there as well. Look at that! The the, the holster, the leather part is. It's also still there, partially. Oh, look at that grips. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Damn, man. <laughs> the Bakelite grip is still completely intact, man. There's a manufacturer stamp on there as well. The magazine is in there, yeah. <laughs> this has been laying here for what, almost 80, 80 years. <laughs> it's still there, guys. Pistol from the Second World War. So what sort of pistol is it, is the question now. Is it maybe, maybe French? French, American, English? What a fine man. It's pristine. Pristine condition, the grips at least. The gun itself is also not too bad. May I just hold it for a second? Do you have any idea what sort of pistol this is? I was thinking about FN. Yeah. There's the leather part as well there. The magazine is in there. Well, that is unexpected. Can I hold it? Yeah, yeah, take it, man. Wow. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Yeah. More leather, there's yeah. more leather there. Yeah. FN, yeah? Yeah, yeah? You can see the leather here. Okay, so my initial thought was right, and Rob just confirmed it. Not sure from which here, but it's probably manufactured pre-World War II. Wow, man. Uh, yeah. what, would we have more leather parts here? Up. No, whoa, whoa, look at that, look at that, look at that stamp. HK, with a sword. This could be an ammunition oh, pouch, maybe. Magazine. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's wow, right. man, it's still not empty. Sick. So we have a magazine here as well. That's why I call it true piece of history right there. That's definitely a neat pistol. This is what they were seeing back in the day. They were basically guarding uh, this forest edge over here. <laughs> That's awesome. Taking some uh, some photos here. That's, uh, that's what we do. Do we have a match? It's a FN M1910, well over 100 years old. I'm wondering if this is from the pistol then. HK, that's a different initials than the uh, FN, right? So I think uh, Jeff is just thinking about life at this moment. <laughs> So how's life right now, Jeff? Very good. 
We just did a Google search and we found out it's actually from Belgium. So that's, they, they took that from there. The German soldiers, probably an officer was walking around with this pistol and uh, for some reason he, uh, he decided to leave it behind. Weapons captured by the German army were called Beutewaffen. Most of these were given a new and unique name. The Wehrmacht called this FM pistol Pistole 621B. They saw extensive service during World War II and production kept going after the Germans captured the FM factory in Belgium. So my buddy Jeff just found a very big brass casing. And uh, do we already know which caliber that is? I'm wondering, it's probably a British one, right? Yeah, I think so too. Recognize anything? Not yet. Could be, uh, it's definitely some sort of field gun. It isn't the biggest caliber, it's smaller than a 25 pounder, so. But yeah, I think it says 1940 something, 1941. I'm not sure what the last figure is. Well, apparently it's Jeff's lucky day because he's digging in a foxhole over here and he just shouted that he found some German flock casings. Iron ones, I believe. Look at that, there's one here. So this is a flock two centimeter casing, used for anti-aircraft purposes. So uh, we're actually digging on top of a hill right now. So you can see the elevation difference there a little bit. Um, so yeah, maybe they had some gun emplacements here. And they were firing at the uh, airplanes. Could be, but uh, I think there's more, more than just one casing. Oh yeah, there's the second one. Again, iron, it would be amazing if you found them in brass, actually. Yeah, I'm getting more and more convinced that the hilltop that we are digging on was actually used for aerial defense purposes. Because uh, a couple of meters besides Jeff, look what I just found. That seems like a really big shell casing, also iron. Uh, it's not complete. I think it's broken in half, but this looks like a flock 3.7 centimeters casing. Again, another gun used for aerial defense was here. So that's great evidence. Right, that's it, time's up. We're going home. Really happy with the finds today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, brand new metal detecting adventure. We'll be back next time. Thank you all for watching, especially my patrons. If you haven't checked out my Patreon yet, there's a lot of exclusive material that you can enjoy. So make sure to check that out and I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>